Good afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I I'll just take one more, just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change, like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mm. yeah. I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Um, check, 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 check. I'm recording. My bookie presents Shake Them Ropes. Use code ROPES. They'll match you halfway, give you a head start on building your bankroll. I am Jeff Hawkins. My partner in crime, or actually in legal activities, is Chris Novembrino. Say hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> I... It's been a rough week. Let's let's just get to the wrestling. I don't, I don't have anything yeah, well, to banter you know, here, here's about. Here's the thing, Jeff. We gotta talk about a man who has too much power uh, inside of a structure that cannot effectively contain him, and he is flexing his power on the would-be authorities, and that, of course, is Roman Reigns. <laughs> Yeah, oh, let me do some house cleaning uh, up front, or housekeeping, I guess you'd say. Uh, this week, I'll be on the episode of Between the Sheets that drops. I believe I'll be on this week. I don't think it takes two weeks to edit. Uh, going over 1986, uh, this past week in 1986, January, a lot of territory wrestling talk. If you're more of an old school fan, you'll enjoy it. Uh, not a lot of modern wrestling talk, so uh, warn you on that. Uh, yeah, we, we'll we'll get to Roman Reigns. Oddly enough, a lot of enjoyable wrestling this week. Just easy to watch shows. I won't say they were great shows, but AEW, NXT, NXT UK, SmackDown. SmackDown all... was sneaky watchable. It was not like the greatest wrestling show I ever saw or anything like that. But like, I didn't make... have the I'm ashamed of seeing it on my screen thing. Yes, they make interesting choices. It may not be the best choices, but they make interesting choices. And because we just watched it fresh off of here. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit of Raw, which wasn't so good. <laughs> yeah, it was But little... popped a number. So we'll, Did we'll talk it about really? that a little bit. Okay, oh, we yeah. got over 2 million. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> we'll go oh over that. no. <laughs> uh yeah, a little bit of news first. Uh, Marty Skrull let go from Ring of Honor. Remember, he signed on with a rather lucrative contract and also to be head booker of the organization at one time. i not terribly surprised by all this, given some of the allegations against him. I'm very interested to see where he goes because I think AEW won't want the heat and I think WWE doesn't care about the heat. They would just want him under contract. Yeah, I, I think if Marty's smart, he uh, will get himself a contract with WWE, who's still kind of operating under the give contracts to people and keep them in a cooler just so that AEW doesn't have access to them. If Marty were smart, he'd get better PR people. <laughs> also, well, and, and I, 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 <laughs> there's a reason we start it with if. Yeah, very true. Uh, over in Japan, Wrestle Kingdom. Big event, their version of WrestleMania for New Japan. Kodo Bushi is now your IWGP and Intercontinental Champion, beating both Naito for the Intercontinental Championship and Jay White for the IWGP Championship. A lot of people are saying that Jay White may be WWE bound. I personally, if I'm him, I would, I would wait a little, let people wine and dine, but I'm not going to knock a guy getting a contract either. And if they are interested in him, Take the money. Hope you get a good run in NXT. You just wanna, you just wanna do the Nakamura thing and surf. Take take the main roster money as well. Uh, any any thoughts? Not on, gonna uh, lie, Jay White. 
I would like to see him in AEW against Darby Allen. I think like those two people having a feud would appeal to a certain section of the audience, and I think it'd be a good feud for Darby Allen. Uh, I think that, like many people, he'd probably get better placement over on the AEW roster. Yes, if if you like wrestling and you want great matches, you want him in AEW because I I'd love to see him against Pac. I'd love to see him against Omega. Yeah, yeah, it's about utilization for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, there's just a lot. There's think, a lot more interesting programs over there. And I think they're someone who will let him get over with his mouth. I think they'll let him talk. They'll let him do the promos. Like he had a fantastic promo uh, on the second night after losing. It, it was. It, it's. I mean, those are the types of things that get you over in the states, in my opinion. And WWE would, you know. A story net, but they're gonna th- probably throw more money at him. So oh, they're gonna throw more money at him. I just I think you know, realistically, um, I, the question for Jay White is, can he get the big contract from WWE down the line as well? Probably, uh, and I think that if he did AEW prior to WWE, it gives him a better chance of not ending up smack dab in the mid card. Because I think, you know, one of the issues for people who have come from non WWE promotions, and I'm going to call them the indies at this point, because they're, they're much bigger than that. Um, is when you get into WWE, you've got to be the right size for a main eventer. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, who, who was never in the indies like that, um, or in, in any of these other promotions, he's not the right size for a main eventer. Um, and as such, you get pigeonholed in that upper mid card uh, intercontinental U.S. champion slot circuit, uh, tag team champion circuit, uh, and a guy like Jay White, he would very much end up, you know, <laughs> in the mid card, possibly though chasing the twenty four seven title around with uh, <laughs> oh, Grand God. Metalik, do the, that the king me. of the ropes. I know, I, but I just want to be realistic. Braun Strowman doesn't have to chase. Or truth around because he's big enough. Um, I want my twenty four seven title. Oh, give me now, back. <laughs> um, you know, almost doesn't now have to I worry that. about that. Now I want him to be one of the guys chasing for truth. Um, look, it's not like there's a lack of great matches in NXT either. I'll take a Finn Balor match. I'll take a, uh, any member of the Undisputed Era. It, oh, you know, kill or I'm um, not Killian Dane. Uh, the 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 evil guy, Doomsday Man. Uh, what's his name? Carrion Cross. Carrion Cross. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good match. I'll take I'll take all those. So wherever he goes, I, I'm a I'm a guy who was not originally high on Jay White. I didn't care for him at all. Uh, mm, yeah. I like I liked, but when he when when Switchblade came around, I dug it, and so I'm in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, I, I think he's yeah, I think he's good. I, I, I just yeah, I didn't like the gi- the gimmick initially, but like that's the most fungible element of it in terms of is this man a skilled wrestler? Absolutely. Um and I think that he will land on his feet wherever he goes. WWE has hired Christy Lubrano as its senior vice president of creative writing operations. That's who I should send my resume to, I guess. She <laughs> no. She had worked from 2001 to 2019 at the IFC channel. I believe that's the independent film channel where she ended up as senior vice president of original programming and development. Oh, they hired someone who knows how to write. That's great. Vince is still in charge. That's what I think of that. Yeah, that's, that's all I can say. Um, I I mean, it's one of the reasons why, like, as we'll get into the shows here, like even if you see interesting or kind of quirky writing developments, you can't trust that that's going to be the start of a new writing style or a new booking pattern or new angles, because at any point, Vince can go, what the hell is this? Why did you, why do, you do that? Oh, you're, look, you gotta just go back to fundamentals. You know? I don't feel like writing. I'm gonna just going to make a gauntlet match for the second hour of SmackDown. Yeah. <laughs> Throw Adam Pearce in there. Oh, we'll get that. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> uh, the Dusty Classic teams have been announced. Undisputed Era, Ever Rise, Brizongo, Kurt Stallion and August Gray, Killian Dane and Drake Maverick, Imperium, the Grizzled Young Veterans, Legato Del Fantasma, NXT North American Champion Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory, a.k.a. The Way, uh, Swerve Scott and Jake Atlas. <laughs> they just turned him. What? They can't make sense of this. He's going to turn again. It's fine. 
Kushida and Leon Ruff and the Bollywood Boys. I don't know why that threw me off right there, but I saw it on NXT, and I still couldn't believe they were doing it. Oddly enough, no Lucha House Party, which was my thinking that they were going to put over Legato Del Fantasma. Um, you know, it, it's it's their tag teams. There's no real there's no real hook to it as they've had in previous years. Uh, I guess you could consider the Grizzled Young Veterans uh, NXT UK imports, so to speak. But uh, a lot of years yeah. they have a really fun angle that kind of runs through. Yeah. Like leading into the formation of this, like and and you know I'm not jazzed about Kushida and Leon Ruff tagging together. <laughs> um, although, although let me tell you, I bet you they go like at least one round further than either of us think. They they probably get an upset win first yeah, round at least. Maybe. Yeah, I uh, I, uh, I feel like. They're gonna want to do a redemption story for Leon Ruff or something. I, I, I don't get know the how feeling, far that goes, but yeah, I think Swerve Scott Price screws it for his team, and somebody gets a buy into the next round or something like that. Uh, I, I I pick the undisputed era. I think they're gonna build them up for uh, for Lorkin and Birch again, but uh, we'll see. Do you have a yeah. have a uh, early winner for that? Ever rise. Yes, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. This. Yeah, I, actually, it would be very funny if they they won. Um, they would they would actually benefit from it too, even if it was kind of quirky. It would be, if they never won the titles, but always had the fact that they won the Dusty Classic as a thing to lord over, essentially a title that can't be taken away from them. That's good heel stuff. I don't think it's gonna be them, uh, but it should be them. Also announced, the women are getting a Dusty tournament, which is interesting. Given some of the moves that they've been making of late, you know, I think Carter and Cat and Zaro. I think you probably get uh, you probably Riot get Squad the, comes uh, down. I don't know if the Riot Squad. I don't know if they bring anybody down. I know they'll they'll probably have Indy and Candice. They'll have Shotzi and uh, whoever's teaming Ember? with Shotzi right now. Isn't is Ember yeah, teaming is. with Shotzi? Maybe Ember. Yeah, something like that. EO probably finds a partner. You get the. Uh, or wait, did Ember turn heel? No, I don't think no. so. Okay, I don't. Tony remember. Storm and uh, Tony Storm. Oh yeah, you, you could have her with. Uh, you could ha- either have her Michelle with Gonzalez uh, re- or with uh, Gonzalez Dakota. Or you could have yeah. Dakota with them. Yeah, I don't know if you have enough teams, but I wouldn't mind seeing somebody from the main roster come into this just for fun. This would be where I'd put like Bailey and Sasha just to do it, just because it would be fun. But you know, they've they've split them off since. You could you could get live in. Ruby down here working a good. Yeah, match. I actually think Liv and Ruby would be sneaky useful here because like Liv is improved and Ruby's good. Yeah, I I would. The one thing I'd stay away from is Billy Kay being a part of that one. Leave the comedy for the main roster. Oh, Billy Kay, she is a hoot. <laughs> she really. Uh, is. As we go into uh, WWE speak, two two items from the Observer. I wanted to read to you, Chris, and get your reactions or. Uh, Dave Meltzer reported that Daniel Bryan has been pushing for more NXT talent to be brought up to SmackDown, but has been met with opposition. <laughs> shock, I'm shocked. Uh, Meltzer said that Bryan, who was involved in creative, has got pushback due to poor track record of those brought up over the last two years. Vince McMahon losing interest in call-ups soon after they debut, and the number of main roster talents who don't currently have a role on television. You could say he's getting no movement. Horrible. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm canceling the show. We gotta Vince go. has new toy syndrome. I mean, it, it, it's funny to me. Oh, there's guys who can't get on TV. Well, write them in. Because I'm sure there are writers who are pitching you stories for, say, Mojo Raleigh to get on television or something like that. I mean, it. I. Uh, I mean, the, I, the crazy I, I, thing is, like, how long some of these segments go sometimes, too. And they, they are often without, like, a real thread. Do, do, do we need. More Firefly Funhouse. Uh, we have a three-hour program. Yeah, we've had, I mean, we've talked to people in the company who were like, hey, we want to use NXT people for 205 Live, and they couldn't get them. I, you know, I, I, I understand. See, Brian is forward-thinking, and it's very weird to me because this SmackDown show almost feels like there's not a lot of oversight from, from the big man. But... You know, I, I also could see him going, nope, 
It's got to be our superstars. We're, they're main roster superstars. The others are developmental. To Vince. To Vince. Not necessarily to anybody else, but just to Vince. Uh, the other one, speaking of which, Damian Priest was at one point scheduled to debut on the New Year's Day SmackDown show. He was going to be put together with Owens to feud with Reigns and Uso. Owens felt that the story made no sense because the pitch was for Owens to bring him in like he was his best friend backing him up. And Owens felt that Priest's character makes no sense to Owens' character to be a best friend. Owens apparently said that they should redo it where WWE officials book Priest as his tag team partner for his benefit because he keeps getting beat up by Reigns and Uso and that WWE was doing it to protect him. But that didn't work out and Reigns felt it wasn't time to introduce a new person and after that, it was pretty much agreed to by both Reigns and Owens that it wasn't the right time to introduce a random person to the main event mix that didn't seem to fit. As of right now, and this could change, Priest is scheduled for the Raw roster and a debut at the end of the month. Uh, of all of the people down in NXT who absolutely should not be clashing with Roman Reigns, Damian Priest is at the top of my list because he is so similar in terms of look, voice, character. He's the closest of any of the people they have down in NXT. He, he's not he's not Roman Reigns light or anything, but the cool, brooding, deep-voiced guy with dark hair and a cool look. Like, like that. that's what they've done with Roman Reigns, and that's what Damian Priest is, and like he can't change that about himself. That's what Punishment Martinez, that's his name, right? Uh, or his old wrestling name. Like, that's what he looks like. Yes. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, like, but, but, I just, I don't. You don't need these two guys clashing right now. It makes no sense, and it makes no sense to have him paired up with Kevin Owens even further. He could make a friend on the SmackDown roster. Why not do that? I, to me, if you introduced Damian Priest like this, if you had, he'd be as dead as Keith Lee almost is right. Now. And I love Keith Lee, but man, they brought him in. Oh, we're going to introduce him right at the top of the card, and then we're just going to beat him, and we're going to beat him, and we're going to beat him. <laughs> That's what they'd be doing with with uh, Damian Priest here if they want him to be something. Now, if, if the point is just to, you know, just to have another guy on the roster, okay, sure, do this. He gets one win against Jey Uso and then gets destroyed by Roman Reigns in a tag match or whatever. I, I, I get that. I just, what a, what a boneheaded idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, there's just no... There's no thinking going on here. Like, why? You know, I, it's good that Owens pushed back. He's like, this makes no sense. Um, and that he, and not, him and Reigns are simpatico enough that they can both kind of be like, hey, no, this is bad. Um, and that, like, they get how to stop the bad idea, but this is a really bad idea that, it, as the reporting says, is not really moored in anything. Rhea Ripley also looks to be uh, headed up to the main roster. I am hoping, hoping, hoping that they keep her out of the Rumble and just introduce her the day after. Unless she's going to win the Rumble, and I don't think she is because she's already been in a Rumble. I I don't... I think debuts are important. And the way you do it is important. If you're just going to introduce her to be in the Rumble and maybe she eliminates a few people, it's all you did for her last year. I... I I think you hold off until after the Rumble, and then you reintroduce her, maybe to challenge Asuka, and I'd be fine with that. Yeah, um, her as the Royal Rumble winner would be good rehabilitation. I'm with you. Uh, debuts matter, but, uh, you know, um, this is a company that doesn't agree with us. Remember when, like, Charlotte came up, and she debuted, like, in, like, a nothing Raw the first time. Right? Yeah, it was that two minute match against Natty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she had a two minute match against Natty. That was her debut. Charlotte Flair. And then she was identified as Charlotte Flair and we all knew who she was. Um I mean, I get that it matters. I you know, like the Charlotte Flair example, not that Rhea is Charlotte Flair, but like the Charlotte Flair example it, it is also illustrative of the idea that like because this company doesn't care about it and everyone's getting bad debuts, you can survive this event. Um, but like you know, she should have been handled better, but I agree. Who knows? I, I was watching Raw this week and I saw the big show on there. And uh, every time I see that guy, I go like, man, is there ever a person in professional wrestling who has really been underutilized in terms of marketability uh, more than the big show? Um, this guy should have been an absolute oh, like, oh, 
dude, there are shows about this, especially if you go and listen to, you listen to Brian and Vinny over on uh, Wrestling Observer and their breakdown of the Monday Night Wars when Big Show jumped or when the giant jumped from WCW to WWE. And also even when he was made champ for like a week in WCW and they took it right off of him to give to Lex Luger. Uh, yeah, I, I just... They don't protect big guys enough because they r- want to rush them too quickly up top. And it's uh, well, in Paul White in specific, his issue is that he, you know, got this great opportunity super young, but he was surrounded by a bunch of like, you know, snakes uh, and guys who were like, oh, I'm going to get over on this giant guy. Um, and it, he wasn't thinking about how to protect the gimmick and the importance when you're as big and, you know, as as kind of definitive as a character as Paul White is. How wins and losses actually really do matter for your character. Uh, I know we're getting a little sidetracked here. But, yeah, no, I, I all of these things popped in my head when I saw Paul White here on Legends Night, uh, just thinking about his career in retrospective. Well, the Rhea Ripley thing is interesting because there was chatter after tonight's SmackDown show, and this is how I'll bring it back. I, I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, EST Bianca Belair really with that promo she should win the Royal Rumble and you create a new star and that's how you make a big deal out of somebody but that's not that's not the mentality the mentality is you introduce them and you make a big deal of them and you see if the buzz sustains itself and then you extend it a little bit too long and then eventually Vince gets tired and says well this person isn't a star because they're not maintaining their buzz. Like, I watched that promo between Aunt Pam and Bianca, and everybody was saying, oh, they're setting up Bianca for the win. I go, no, they're setting up, they're possibly setting up Bailey for the win, because Bailey is the proven commodity now, and it's obvious that Vince has trust in her, especially from that promo. They're not going to put Bianca in a main event of WrestleMania especially on the first year where they might have people in a stadium. They're going to push Bailey or a known commodity to take on Sasha again. I think they're going to reheat that feud. And then Bianca's going to get the Pyrrhic victory of eliminating more people than anybody in a Royal Rumble, probably between her and Rhea, which is just what they did last year as well between her and Shayna. So I, I, I viewed it far differently and far more jaundiced than, than like, look, If you are a professional wrestling fan and you want to see a professional wrestling booking, yes, you make, yes, you make the young hot commodity look like a million bucks and win a huge event. But boy, with Bianca, this is another (laughs) debut where I'm with you. Like, look, she's a star. Like, so so, so there's a bunch of these people who are like legit stars and need to be presented as such. And you need to have. A solid underclass of people like Natty, um, uh, Mickey James, I guess, is now a legend. But, like, those people putting over the stars Boo! of tomorrow. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> I'm so bad about that. That's she so weird has... to me. I know. Ah. I know. It's so weird. She's good. Um, yeah. I, I, it's madness. Um, if, 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 if she's the big show of women in terms of being mishandled because... No joke. I just, uh, but, but continue, please. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, you need to be building up Bianca and Rhea Ripley and you need to have kind of a, a ladder for them to climb. And like one of the big problems for Rhea, for Bianca as we're seeing right now is like, there is no clear ladder to climb. Like there is a top of the card feud and you're either in it or you're not. And if you're not in it, then you're just in like the general morass of uh, the women's roster. Give a nice shout out to our sponsor this week, my bookie. My bookie's been in a giving mood, and for a sports book that is supposed to be in the business of making money, they're giving it away. That's just one of the reasons why I've been rolling with my bookie this season. The fact is, if you're going to put some action on the games, whether you're betting NFL, NCAA, college ball, or college hoops, whatever your preference, you want to do it with a reputable brand like my bookie. Make your deposit using the promo code ROPES, that's R-O-P-E-S, and they'll match you halfway to give you a head start on building your bankroll. I'm doing a parlay this weekend of those playoff games. You put in $200, you get an extra $100 to play with. Joining and depositing is a simple process and it's quick, but most importantly, when it's time to get paid, that's quick too. 
Treat yourself to some extra cash in your pocket by investing in your intuition. It's not just winter season, it's winning season. So bet, win, and get paid with my bookie. And as always, we thank them for sponsoring shows here at Voices of Wrestling Network, and especially Shake Them Ropes. Once again, use the code ROPES. Get up to half your deposit matched, free money to play with, at mybookie.ag. Raw, as I previously alluded to, topping 2 million viewers this week. Which is amazing because I'm like looking at this card. There's nothing on it, Jeff. It w- <laughs> Look, wrestling fans hate it. WWF, WWE fans love this kind of stuff. The, the kind, the, uh, you know, the, the people in the demographic I'll be in in a few years. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, oh, look, it's guys that we used to watch walking down the hall. That's all these Legends Night are. And to have them sit there like it's a third grade assembly, watching the main event, and then Goldberg of all people. Goldberg is going to be your match for the biggest belt in the company at Royal Rumble in 2021. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I, I, no. There's if no, they pre taped the Royal that, Rumble, they can have him win it. <laughs> the, the promo, you're disrespecting the legend. He never said anything. You know, they were they were they they were rushed on time because of all these other dumb skits they had. And they had to they had to make it make no sense whatsoever. I died watching this thing. I'm like, really? That's your answer? This is the big answer that's gonna turn things around for sagging ratings and get in Goldberg at fifty something is going to be fighting Drew McIntyre. At the Royal Rumble. I uh, it, it's <laughs> Are not, you speechless? I like I don't know what to say. I, I mean, look, the last Goldberg run wasn't bad, but that was because they had a clear beginning, middle, and end that they wanted to do. And this has none of the hallmarks of them knowing where the hell this is going right now. Uh, because this opening segment didn't really make any sense. And the idea that like there, I, I guess maybe the narrative is supposed to be perceived slight. Like Drew McIntyre says something to Goldberg that he takes offense to, but Drew McIntyre didn't mean it that way. But Goldberg wanted a title match. But like, it, it's just it's a terrible angle. Um, I Goldberg's matches last time were good, but they need to be tailored in a very, very, very specific way. And narrative needs to be doing more lifting than the actual work in the ring. And, yeah, no, this, this is going to be a bad angle. What do you want me to say? It's the law of diminishing returns. We, yes. If he had left after the Brock stuff, we'd love the guy. But this is RVD on the third comeback, you know, getting winded doing doing the, you know, the somersault over the top, goes up the top rope, and he just he doesn't have the spring anymore. I... I do, do they want us to hate Goldberg? Because I'm almost thinking they want us to hate Goldberg and resent Goldberg. And I don't think that's what they're playing. But they might. They might just go, hey, you should resent him because he was in WCW and this was WWF and blah, 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 blah. You know, I, I can see. I, like, I don't, I don't know where it goes. D- does Sheamus turn on uh, Drew and align with Goldberg? <laughs> I loved him as a kid, especially that taser angle. I'm still mad about that. He comes How dare Goldberg you disrespect fan. this legend? Oh, my God. Uh, speaking of which, Chris, this may shock you. And this this may be... It this, might. Look, we, we don't break a lot of news on this show, but we occasionally do. Chris, Hulk Hogan said the new stars act kind of cold towards him. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder really? why. Yeah, what, what do you? What, what do you? Is there? Let me ask you this. Did he say any specific group of stars who might uh, be specifically the, cold to him? Well, I believe he says the newer stars, but I would assume that there might be some people like Keith Lee and the New Day and the Hurt Business, and he's just he's just bewildered because hey, he came in and apologized and he 
he gave a pep talk to tell everybody to yeah no he told he did say he was sorry so like it's over right yeah you know you don't have to do any good deeds or go away for a while he said he was sorry and said don't get taped saying bad stuff which is i i could not believe they put hogan all over this to put over their champion but i don't know chris do 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 our wwf fans the old ones were giving because i don't think I, they are I, man i'll tell you what uh that that's what i was thinking about is if you're like one of these laps fans people did you do you really remember given all the stuff that has happened you know in the last 10 years let's just say um all of the hulk hogan ins and outs with the sex tape or anything or is that far enough behind kind of like uh I, it, the different comp here but like hugh grant in the prostitution stuff in the 90s i think most people wouldn't remember that like has that been lost has this been lost in the fog of time a little bit because it's like a celeb story um did it work for a lapsed fan i don't know um i i, I will say that i thought the execution of McIntyre and Hogan doing the what you gonna do stuff was good. It, I I was never a Hulk Hogan guy, so I don't I I had nothing approximating nostalgia or whatever. But it like didn't Hogan seemed like he actually wanted to do a good on camera performance. Um, and that's literally as much as you can ask out of the guy. Vince, Vince Goldberg can't go. I'm here for you, brother. Uh, yeah, one last brother, run. One last match. <laughs> He comes out as Hollywood Hogan. And like, Well, we, we'd have to have two matches because Drew would probably beat him the first time and then Hogan would want his win back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I just, right. I, how toned, like, Alexa Bliss having to be out there with Hogan, I, it, it must be a corporate directive. It has to be just, look, you're going to do this and you're going to like it. And maybe if you're uncomfortable, they'll they'll be willing to think about it, but they're going to hold that against you. I mean, I'm still shocked. I mean, it's not as tone deaf as my first idea, which I thought was going to be the new day having to do a skit with him. (laughs) Because, because I could see some meetings in the office saying, Oh, hell no. I (laughs) wouldn't be surprised if a message was at least passed along that that was an absolute 100% non-starter. Yeah. 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 Hey, 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 hurt business. (laughs) <laughs> Take the boot. Oh, hell no. <laughs> and, yeah, MVP like, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nah, yeah. we ain't doing that today. <laughs> Want to fight about it? <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, let's do some uh, general SmackDown observation since we're on the main roster and then we can move on to other things. Again, an interesting show. And again, my my thing with the Roman Reigns character is it gets to a nice intense point and then it flips to paranoid and the paranoid is kind of the poison pill for the angle for me it's like when man, he's menacing stupid. it's fun and like when he's yes. not leaning into the tribal chief that yes. stuff because it doesn't make any sense like i still don't understand what one being the I'm now understanding that apparently being the tribal chief means that you have like booking power on smacked out like <laughs> it's sort of so. a management I... job. <laughs> I I didn't realize that, but uh, no. Um, when it's just menacing, Roman Reigns, uh, Joe uh, Anawai or whatever, has found this really interesting. This year has reminded us of the importance of saving for the unexpected, and as a bank, our job is to make that a little easier for everyone. That's why at Huntington we're so proud to introduce Money Scout. It analyzes your checking account to find money that's not being used and moves it to your savings automatically. It's that simple, so you can always be saving, even now. Learn more and enroll at Huntington.com slash Money Scout. Huntington, welcome. Money Scout is subject to eligibility, terms and conditions, and other account agreements. Member FDIC. Character twist to the Roman stuff, and it's opened up this performance in him that's really interesting and good and provocative and main event heel level. Uh, there were there were real moments like when they were like you're this you're safe in this ring right now, or like when he was doing the whole thing about you're saying I'm stupid, you're saying he's stupid, you're saying that guy and it, like, like that created this. That's air where of I menace. bail. That's interesting. Well, the- I liked how the sharks were starting to circle Adam Pierce, and I liked the menace that was being created there. No, I like the menace. The menace is fantastic. It's when he gets to, where he gets to, well, 
that means you're disrespecting my family. That means you want to take out my children. That means you want to kill my grandchildren. That means you want to take well, no, for my table. But that's all being – okay. I get what you're saying, and in different weeks he said stuff like that, and, it, and it's come off as purely paranoid. But this week was different because those those statements which he has said in the past, this week were all in part of a circling argument around Pierce. Essentially, kind of like it, it it was to trip up Pierce's character, right? Like so, like I get why he was doing it this week, and he was doing it to different effect. Pierce is great. I, I liked it. No, I, I, I this scene I seventy percent enjoyed, um, and I definitely like was like standing there and watching it and engaged. Not there was no half watching during this first scene. Yeah, just let him react to the menace as opposed to scripting the. Oh, okay. What? Well, that's that's where they get into trouble. Is is when they have guys back down or act fearful because it sounds. Well, and the okay, other part is, I, like, this. here's where it lost me, right? Like, so where's my 30% get off? I don't understand the management structure of SmackDown. I'll lick at this point. <laughs> I thought that Adam Pierce is the guy who booked the show. Um, well, next week it's going to be Sonya. It's going to be Sonya versus Roman out there. <laughs> right, and then he hires Sonya at one point that he's still somehow thrown back in. Like, none of this makes any sense to me. I don't understand how Roman's got this leverage. And I guess that'll be like the mystery <laughs> reveal next week, but it doesn't make any sense at face value. I got some strings pulled and you're in the gauntlet match. I'm management. Do you I know? don't wrestle. <laughs> uh, he doesn't, he doesn't I even have wrestle. a wrestling license. I don't even work here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm hey. not under contract as a wrestler. Like you, to that point, at no point in WWE, we get sometimes like the Stooges or whatever in the back have had to wrestle or whatever. But like management is not a wrestling contract. That's not how like the WWE universe narrative works. <laughs> yeah, they love to do the ones you like to fight your boss thing. And yeah, I get that. But I like I like have it's <laughs> Ric Flair to take Jim Crockett to the ring to take him on. <laughs> And, Dude, and then, everybody. boy, Michael Cole saying Adam Pierce wasn't good enough to wrestle here. Like even Corey Graves. Oh, like, are you kidding me? I, I just <laughs> Corey I... Graves like try to like walk that back. It's just like shit, dude. Like, come on. <laughs> and... oh, that had that had to be fed to Cole during this segment, just because. <laughs> oh, let's bury the guy on TV, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, new tag team champs on SmackDown. The raw dogs, uh, no, the, 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 the raw Ziggler dogs are the are the people who support. Don't worry about the government. The dirty dogs are the name of the tag team. Oh, they're team. the dirty dogs. Did I? Oh, okay. I got. Oh, jeez. I did that again. I did that last week too. They never they never refer to them as their as their name. They just have merchandise, which is also terribly ridiculous. I got some questions as to why they did it on on my Twitter, and I'm like, I don't have any insight for you, other than. Maybe one has an injury. Maybe maybe they want a moment at Royal Rumble where they get them back. Or maybe they're bringing in a new team to win them as a transitional champs. But I haven't heard any news. I haven't read anything. So if there is any news, let me know. But I maybe they're just doing title switches to get interest now. I, I how think they did that, that is... On new Year's. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I, th- I think... Look, what you're seeing is a little bit of a desperate booking pattern right now. And I don't necessarily think it's like, oh, we're worried that AEW is going to kill us so much as it is. There is a downward spiral in these ratings. Um, And like this, this legend show popped a nice little number. Okay, great. But like, you can't have the legends back next week. And to your point, it's a law of diminishing returns. You can only do the, you can play the legends card once every six months maximum. Um, anything more than that, and you're not going to get the same effect. And if you keep kind of squeeze juice from that lemon, look, no one's really interested in Ric Flair turning heel on Charlotte. Um, especially, oh my God. Rick, especially this Ric Flair. I think, I think if anything, uh, seeing Ric Flair in this state for a lot of like lapsed fans was probably a little bit jarring. Um, he's having a hard Old, time walking sad. around. Old sad. Yeah, you're right, Randy. You're the best Ric Flair. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody no. who loved Ric Flair wants to see that ever, except Vince. Vince wants to see that. Vince likes because, us because of old scores. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and because and because Flair will play the game, and Flair wants 
wants the best for Charlotte. He'll do it too. And I, I think maybe parts of him think, I just listened to him. Oh, yeah, Hunter was the best. Randy's the best. <laughs> just like, okay, dude, whatever. I, yeah, that's just wrong. I, I'll tell you something I liked. At least I'm another 70 percenter on this one. The uh, the Apollo Cruz versus Big E match. Yeah, this is another 70 percent experience for me. I loved it. I loved the hard hitting. I loved that he was trying to win the title. And I love that I he was like the angry slap. about the. I didn't like the slap. You didn't like the slap. I didn't like the slap. I thought it came out of. I I think if they, I mean, I guess if you believe that they're really friends or not really friends, you do that, and and that kind of was built by last week's disingenuous friendship. The, I would have liked the, the s- much more. Oh, sorry. I, I would have liked much. No, that's okay. I would have liked the much more. I would have liked the approach where he's just mad about not getting another chance possibly. Hey, let's finish this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Because what the slap did was that it enabled Big E after the match to do that rubbing it in your face thing, which I, I didn't like. I got to be honest. I didn't like it. I loved the match. I didn't like the showboating after. Well, see, you slapped me. So ha 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 kind of thing. I, I get that that's what they want to do. I just, uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I thought. I, no, so it, I wouldn't have had Big E essentially – like, they were trying to do, like, a good sportsmanship. Hey, both their shoulders are down. I retain the title. But, like, that's not actually what a baby face would do in that scenario. A baby face would feel like that finish was not sporting and would want to see its see the match to its logical conclusion. They would not want yes. to knock off because they would want to, at minimum, establish a rematch next week and, like, yes. you know, the handshake. We'll redo and, and this a, next week. Right, that's yeah. what a baby face would do. What Big E was yeah. doing was really this like middle ground that morally kind of comes from nowhere because like it's a baby face taking a technical win um, that is not a demonstration that he's the better person or the better athlete in the competition. It's just, well, them's the rules, and I, I actually you didn't even technically lose, and I didn't even technically win, I, but I do retain, so we're done uh, having any further wrestling matches. Thank you. That's that's just I think not a baby it. face thing. I think you nailed it. I, th- I think that's perfect. That's probably why, and that's also probably why they had to overdo the the heelishness of the slap. Because right, like, you can be angry about not getting the match, but I mean, I guess you know. Okay, this is now Apollo full heel. Uh, or, uh, okay. or or another way of thinking about this is it's Big E soft heel. Where, like, he was trying to act like a good guy, but he's actually hiding behind the rules. And at the end of the match, he's gloating on Apollo. Um, no, no, no. No, this yeah, is not I, a heel. This I, is I, not- know, I know I don't think they're doing that, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the problem with this sort of am- ambiguity. This is how they do baby faces. This is how, you know, he's he's confident in himself, and he's entertaining the crowd. You know, he's, he's I like, like, a I like how the too. slap – here's why I like the slap. I like that the slap justified renewed intensity for the restart of the match, and, like, it allowed the match to start into a second gear, and I love starting the match in the second gear, restarting the match in second gear, and, like – they worked harder. I would have had a little more 50 50, a little more of a strong style thing than like just keep taking belly to backs. That That's a WWE yes. quirk. Um, and, and like the splash was kind of like, uh, there's certain beats in that that I would have done a little differently um, in terms of move choices. But um, I, there are a lot, there's a lot Actually, of good stuff in here. And this, uh, this really <laughs> exceeded Whoa. expectations. It was intense. Like Yuffie versus Hazy, a long running feud here in uh, the Nova <laughs> Brino Wrestling Federation. I've run in by the cats. Shut up. Stop cutting a promo. All right, get over here. There we go. (laughs) Yuffie took it to the top rope, um, as she is wont to do. I just don't want her to come off the top. I I would have liked the slap. Let me walk this back. I would have liked the slap if if Apollo had done a performance where it felt earned. Like, Biggie is is leaving the ring, and Apollo's like, you're just going to leave like that. I'm, I'm going to have to do something to make you stay. Okay, here, bam, like that kind of thing. They tried to do that, but they didn't quite get there for me. But, you know, uh, different strokes for different folks. Love the match. This is the best Apollo's looked in a long time, I think. I know. So, no, this And this was a very good match in terms of establishing Big E as a legitimate and strong champion. And more importantly, establishing what the Big E Intercontinental Championship title match is going to look like in terms of pacing. And, and Big E, for his part, looks great. 
Um, really in control. His moves look really crisp. Um, like, dude, he's a great wrestler. And and the gauntlet match, good wrestling. Are they baby facing Nakamura? I I think they sort of necessarily are, right? Like he got screwed. Daniel Bryan gave him a handshake. And okay. Sami Zayn uh, also didn't like really have uh, like, there was no like positive interaction between him and Nakamura or anything like that. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I mean, I love Nakamura still. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I would yeah, like, like Nakamura and Bryan tagging together too. That'd be fun. Uh, are we going to actually <laughs> they can't do this match this is going to be like a 20 second squash and then eventually he, the, where, well, the I, Royal Rumble was when it's like weeks away he is not going to be Adam Pierce is a storyline for TV here for the next several weeks it's not going to be Adam Pierce versus Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble I don't think I, I think they, I they are now, just doing this as a narrative device yeah I am now more and more convinced that uh and I think Daniel Bryan's going to be the choice in that my choice about the women's Royal Rumble is wrong because because they'd never do both on the same show. It's one show and the other show. And I thought for certain Bailey was going to win the Royal Rumble, but I think I think they may give it to Daniel to, to hype Roman and, and Daniel for Re- Mania. That's a match I'd want to see. Yeah, you know, well, uh, no, actually, I'll, I'll be honest. I think that angle w- would be a really hot angle. You have a lot of really great history between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns to tap into. Uh, Roman Reigns as the heel champion with the company fully embracing the idea that this guy is the bad guy. And, and Bryan, especially if Bryan and Reigns really kind of actively write their story and, and kind of take an active hand in the same way that it seems like Owens and Reigns sort of did to a certain extent. Uh, I think that'd be great. Uh, I'm I'm into that angle. Let's uh, let's get NXT UK out of the way. I have a couple of quick notes. Uh, the Ben Carter uh, Irish Ace, forgetting his name right offhand. Oh, uh, Jordan uh, Devlin. I, I, this little Jordan segment Devlin, was. Thank you. They, they, all three of these guys are really fun in this segment. Oh, the segment's good. The match was spectacular. I thought. Yeah, I thought the yeah. match was great. Again, I, I don't like introducing a guy just to have him lose. I think this was better than most. I thought the talk show... See, you like the talk show a little bit more than I did. I, th- I thought uh, Ben look, Carter I think Noam Dar is just... He's a funny guy. And, and I I liked at the end of it where he's like... Where Ben Carter's like, I got a title shot. And Noam Dar's like, yeah, that's great. I, I, don't, I don't even have a title <laughs> shot. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. I think that... I mean, I, I liked it and I hated it simultaneous. I got a title shot. I was like... Oh, okay. I think he did a nice job. Like they, I mean, they fed him the exact line of happy oh, to no, be here, but he not just nice happy job. to be here. Yeah, he did a nice job. I just don't know if that would be the 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 angle I'd take on on that. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a look. I loved his match on AEW Dark. He tore it up at PWG the one time he was there. I'm I'm good with this. I'm yeah. I like Ben Carter a lot. Seth Rollins student, so you know he'll have a long career eventually. I think, uh, yeah, I, I I was good with this. My darling Ginny, though, love me some Ginny. Y'all know I love me some Ginny. Love me Kaylee Ray too, and I'm here for that feud. But I feel like I'm being trolled, Chris. I have come on here for weeks as a He's loyal. He's worthy. He's worthy. No. You shut your hole right now. Let me get my anger out. Okay. Let me get my anger out. Let me let me get it out. I have watched every episode of NXT UK. And NXT UK comes back to me with scone, daddy. With scone, baby. Joseph Connor. Joseph, the man I loathe the most on this show. More than whoop guy and bootleg Kofi. More than anybody on this show. Joseph, friggin' Connor, and Jenny are paired up. Chris, vamp while I take a breath and a drink. So, here's the thing, Jeff. I know you hate Joseph Connors, but you just said that he's worse than Whoop Guy. And that's fundamentally wrong, because I know that we have seen Joseph I did Connors... Not. I did not. I did not. I did not. I said I don't like him. I mean, I, Connors I has like had him. more good Anthony matches on NXT UK than Whoop it Guy It wasn't has. judging his talent. Was not judging his talent. The character is bad. 
The character Wook, uh, Wook has... worse. Wook has worse. I'm sorry. Wook has worse. Wook, Wook but but Connor, Connor oh, is yes. very bad. Uh, I just, I just... I, you, you're you're talking about Whoop guy here. You're, you're you're asking me. You're asking me to go against a blue chipper in Whoop guy. Brown chipper. Blue chipper's fine. It's fine. I, yeah, yeah, blue chipper. And yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, no, but uh, they're, they're not. Dull they're not promos. good. Yeah. Dull character when he was doing the internal anger thing. Yeah. No, please. I, I mean, Ginny has, <laughs> Ginny has so much upside to me, especially, especially if they'd bring her over to NXT regular and be part of that division. Hell yes. Uh, but so does Kaylee Ray. So give me this feud. I just, I want to see those two have a nice feud without this dope in the middle of it. But yeah, the, uh, the, the flagship Jag champion, Joseph Connors, <laughs> then uh yeah other uh other things that may have tickled your fancy on this show oh god uh what was the other thing that happened oh you know what i think that the tyler bait promo i don't oh, know that was fantastic yeah right like I, okay I, i'm not i don't know about fantastic i don't know that it, okay it was good but like i was i was a little south of fantastic but it was good and well executed and interesting um, it makes me really interested in what Tyler Bates is going to do next. And I loved how they got out of it by showing Gradwell looking at that and going, that's crap. Like, like, that was cool. Like that, that was just a fresh <laughs> way of getting out of that. And it tells me where the promo, it was a very effective piece of blocking that gives us the next narrative beats without giving us too much of the story and no, no additional talking is really needed. I would agree with you. I think that was done rather clever, but I, I just love, I love personality pieces. I like going into the history and they don't do that a lot in WWE. So when they actually bring up, when they reward your attention, I, I overrate it probably a lot more because I'm a guy who watches. I just not tell if he was getting high on his own supply during, you know, like, like the, the promo little, was so weird. Like, to, you know, Gravel was like, oh, he's a yogi or whatever. I love the, the only yogi I like steals fucking baskets. Uh, maybe a bit of a dated joke, but a funny one nonetheless. Um, but I couldn't tell tone wise if he was like lost up his own arse or like if you know uh, he was <laughs> yes, really interested. Yes, we must, we must, we must swear in British. Uh, you know, it, it, it's NXT UK, and I wanted to you know try to keep it a family program. Oh yeah, uh, and I will, I will also uh, once again continue to start to really turn positively towards Saxon Huxley. I like him. I'm starting to like him more. I like him. I, yeah, I like him. I, you know, no, I, I, <laughs> I, was, did, oh, I, I like almost, him? I almost went make a joke, like in to make a joke mode and bring up Joseph Connors again. But I decided that I was just going to no. be uh, serious oh, his former partner? and just say, I like him. Joseph Connor was the Genetti of that team. It turns out, uh, and I like the pretty deadly How thing was, you, uh, it was okay. Yeah. I, yeah. No, pretty, uh, th this is not like the best pretty deadly week, but I, I, I remain high. on pretty deadly. Their, their theme song is like, it's, it's delightfully bad. Uh, I love, I love pretty <laughs> deadly. It's wonderfully horrible. As they say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought both Wednesday night shows were quite good. Uh, if you were a fan of wrestling Wednesday night, I think mostly, I'm not going to say it would all hit it out of the park, but a lot of those, I mean, Phoenix and Omega was pretty damn fantastic. Uh, the opening eight man, I really love because, of course, Jack Evans is possibly the most underrated person in AEW in terms of being an all around package, in my opinion. The promos were pretty good. The Jurassic Express and FTR with Tully, I liked. Um, Where do you see the SCU yeah. stuff going? I think I think Daniels is uh is gonna hang it up. Oh, okay. You think they're they're gonna win the after titles one more time? Oh, after a heel turn. I think they sp I think they split up, and I think uh, I think one of the guys gets uh, upset. I think I think probably Daniels. Uh, Daniels turns on Daniels Kaz, and like his on his way out, he puts yes. Kaz over one more time. Yes, I think that's probably it. Or. Or they lose and they're still SCU, but they're a unit, and it becomes Scorpio Sky, 
and Kaz more and more. And they start talking about, yeah, we got to look to the fresh blood because the old's out. And it's like, are you calling me old? And it becomes one of those things. Yeah, or, but, uh, or they could yeah, spin off Daniels into a singles run. Like, just he, he becomes the singles guy and it's Kaz and Sky as the tag team. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, news, I, I just, it was weird. Just wanted... The big news, the ending angle. Uh, the Good Brothers show up from TNA, not TNA, from Impact Wrestling. Sorry for the TNA Impact fans. Uh, join up with Kenny Omega, and it looks like the Young Bucks are part of the crew, too. Although, reluctantly. reluctantly. Yeah, I, I think they get turned on at some point. That'd be interesting, I think. Yeah, it, like, I, I think that would... This doesn't seem like a real reunion of the Bullet Club. The, like, it, it was sort of like when they delivered the super kicks, they did it because instinctually Kenny's their friend, but, like, they also have not really talked with Kenny since the end of that one pay-per-view where they were all going heel, but then they decided to walk that back in a retcon. Right. I, I agree there. And uh, Taz is just so fantastic as an as a uh, as a manager, I wish they'd keep him off of dark because it really screws with my mind when I then watch him on the AEW show. Because he's funny he's, on dark, though. But yes, yeah, he's no, funny they, on dark. They, no, I, I he's know, out of no, control I, on dark. I I, I, I know, <laughs> and I it, know it, like, and no I know filter. it's bad, but I don't want it to stop. I just wait for Botchamania to come on to see what Taz has said this next week. Um. Low point was the Abaddon match for me. I, I just don't like the Abaddon gimmick. Though. No, That's I don't me. care. I don't care for her gimmick. It's just, it, it it is, it's like a weird Kane Gangrel Undertaker thing, but she just doesn't, it doesn't deliver the menace thing that you sort of need out of these type of gimmicks. Props to AEW for doing a subtle angle. I, I I'm liking this MJF thing. Yes. Okay. You know what I thought was an interesting little beat? Because we've been tough. We we've, we've been tough on MJF, so we, we sure have love here. So yeah. I thought the beat where he went and talked to Jake Hager was an additional little narrative point that didn't necessarily have to be there, but was such a little step off the beaten path. Uh, uh and and it, now it's it was, becoming becoming clear that he's becoming good guy MJF, so that he can amass enough power to eventually side knife Jericho. It was well done. It was smart. It felt real. There was no melodrama to it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hager's in a rage and he'd probably punch him instead of calming down. But you know, for a wrestling angle, quite good, I think. And yeah, I agree there. He's amassing power and, and it's going to be great when they all eventually turn on Jericho. Uh, yeah, no, I liked that. Um, a little bit of bad news coming out of this. The uh, the Britt Baker versus um, uh, 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 Thunder Rosa match has been scrapped because Thunder Rosa came in contact with someone with COVID-19. So that will happen at a later date. Uh, yeah, any other AEW thoughts? Chris? Oh, sorry. I, I had to attend to cat <laughs> stuff here. We'll repeat that last line to me. Do you- <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let's 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 get play by play of the cats. What's going on here? Okay, so um, in the case of Hazy, it's said she's got like a case of pica, and sometimes we'll start licking things that she doesn't need to be licking. So like, you know, oh, I like do that met- all the time. I get like, that. do you you lick a lot of metal? You look a lot of metal. You you looking a lot of like iron and stuff that you shouldn't be looking. Yeah, if I'm if I'm if I'm feeling frisky, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> it, it's it's your diet is like hot dogs and like weight bars and like yeah, things that are made of metal. <laughs> Just licking those um, in between meals of hot dogs. Well, that, and that's been that, that's the cat report like- here. Chesterfield. Chesterfield is kind of circling because, like, he thinks it's going to be dinner time, but but in fact, what it's going to be is nothing time because we got we got hot rock and roll day. Hey, it's be hot dog hot time. Hot dogs for Thanksgiving because I was lazy. <laughs> uh, I just didn't want to cook. Um, yeah, and then we we'll go into NXT. Uh, mostly good. It was mostly it, it felt a lot like. 
the ones that weren't blow off angles were very story heavy, but even the ones that weren't were great. Look, Johnny Gargano in the way I'm here for this. I mean, I'm here He's for Austin funny. Theory just getting hit in the yes. nuts. Yes. Just hit him in the nuts all the damn time, please. I I he's get that some of this goof. stuff is stupid and or lowbrow, but it's funny and and he's good at executing it, and like he amuses me. The show's still this is a little the unrepe- stiff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like just uh, the, the the pacing of the show is a little stiff. Um, Karrion Cross and Damian Priest was was good. Uh, that that was a good match. Um. Escobar and Le- Le- or uh, Escobar versus Grand Metal League wasn't bad. Um, Loved I liked, it. I liked reestablishing Zia Lee. I they they emphasized the kicks and stuff, and like the kick that she finished off uh, Katrina Cortez with looked good. Um, what do you think of the entrance? The entrance is a bit silly. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, like maybe maybe bring Scarlet out to say "Fall and Pray," and then they can <laughs> do that. Yeah, I the the uh that that's main rosterism coming to NXT though. That's yeah. the flair for the dramatic type stuff. No, uh I mean but the presentation of Zyle is the it's the best she's looked in the ring presentation wise. Um I even liked in updating her song, they took stuff from her original theme and actually like darkened it up and like used that as the springboard for the character shift, which is the thing so often when they are turning someone face or heel, they don't do because there's no thought into the face or heel turn. Um, but I think it's a really nice touch where a character, a wrestler has a motif, a, a, a thing to their theme. And when their face, it's got like one sort of vibe to it. And when they're heel, it's got a different, darker vibe to it. Yeah, the two matches at the top of the card were the best for me. I I I really did enjoy this Raquel Gonzalez versus Rhea Ripley thing, even with the Dakota Kai interference. But yes, throwing Dakota Kai in a locker, I I, I laughed at that. I'm sorry, I I loved it. Yeah, I I liked that, but it it just it made this match is like a, it was just a little weird for me. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't great. No, it wasn't. Um. But it wasn't it, bad. I mean, it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't, but like a lot of the spots just, they weren't convincing in certain ways. Like the submission like stuff. And now we're going to, yeah. Go, yeah. And, and then, yeah, Here timing, go, like he, when Dakota Kai chooses to insert herself and like, you know, it, mm-hmm. it, it just it was weird. Yeah. I didn't need Dakota Kai in there overall. I just wanted to see two, two, a Haas women match between two people who are tough and can beat the crap out of each other. And yeah, it, it felt way too. I want to say paint by numbers would be the term I'd use because it's like, okay, we're, but it's not paint even by the numbers. board. It, no, it, like when they slammed her into the video board thing and like the board has a pre-programmed pseudo glitch thing and it glitched for about 10 seconds and then it went back to normal. This was made on a, spreadsheet or a flow chart type thing where it's like, okay, you go here first, you do this spot. You go here, yeah, you do it was this. Template. It, it, it was way too template. It was way too stiff. Yeah, way too template. That's a good that's a good term for it. Uh, yeah. And then of course Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor. I'm a little shocked they didn't put the belt on Kyle. Just a little bit. I thought maybe they would here. Uh I like Finn as a strong presence though. I liked the the story of the jaw that's at least been established. Unlike, yes. unlike the, unlike the tag team of Raquel and Rhea Ripley, which they were putting over, over, they got tattoos. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. That didn't work. But, uh, I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of this match. I understand really? why they didn't put the title on. Where, where on would you Kyle. put the, would you, where would you rank this of the three matches they've had? I'd probably still rank it third. Yeah, and no, I, I I think this is actually fairly firmly third. Um, I thought this was a step down. It wasn't bad. Um, I thought they went back to Bauer and O'Reilly maybe a little too soon. Um, I think that this has more life in it, and I also think I, I like Kyle O'Reilly's facials and reactions and everything at the end of this were great, but they're almost like the end of the story in a weird way. I didn't uh, understand him to be honest with you, because it felt like he was like too. <sighs> I, I, he was despondent. It was, it was, yes. And I don't know if that was 
the way to go with Kyle O'Reilly. And, oh, and for you, that might've been too far. Yeah, I know it's, it's interesting. And like, I, I, I don't know. I just, I think he's the guy right now. So it, it was weird for, it's weird to see him seemingly kind of cycled out of the title picture for now. Yeah. Cause I think they're going to give the belt back to cross and so maybe they give the belt yeah. back to cross. No, I, yeah, and then Kyle I wins don't... it from him. I d- yeah, maybe, maybe, but like also, maybe. I, I think it's important narratively. I think it would have been important for him to beat Finn Balor. Yeah, I could also see Cross going main roster real quick because of the entrance and Scarlet being attractive. That'll help Vince and Kevin Dunn. So, yeah, she's hot. Uh, kind of. Thing. I also think maybe I, Balor I and O'Reilly created a problem for the booking down there, and that they had quote unquote too good of a match. Like it was, it was too compelling and they felt like they needed to finish out the story, but it, now it ends in a way that's not necessarily great for Kyle. Agreed. Um, yeah, we'll cut it off from there. I'd like to thank our sponsor, my bookie. Use code ropes, get up to half in your deposit. Uh, you can follow me at crap game 13. You can follow Chris at D W a T G. That's short for don't worry about the government. You can just follow the show at Shake Them Ropes. Once again, would love for you to listen to my appearance on Between the Sheets, and I'm also recording on Sunday Music of the Mat. I got a cram for that one because I'm doing the themes of Stink, Chris. But uh, we'll see oh, how you, that you, goes. You, my, my favorite one's the one that's like just an A chord where it's like... That's mine too. You, know, you want to know why? Because it it has that dun 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 right at the top there, gets the uh, gets the mood going, uh yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm rolling over on your uh, on your plugs here. Uh, tell us about. Don't worry about the government. Yeah, two episodes out this week. Uh, one before the six, one after the six. So if you want to hear before and after takes of where I was on those two days, go and check that out over at don't worry TV. Um, they're always up early at patreoncom slash DWATG and they're up early and free. Um, so you, you can hear them. They just, they end up there first and they end up on feeds second on iTunes, Stitcher and Spotify, but, uh, go and check it out. That's where you find me. We need more cat fighting on this show. Bow, bow, bow. I was sting. Average weight loss 15.4 pounds in first two months. For guarantee, cancel within first 14 days. Discount with two months of auto delivery. Food charged and shipped every four weeks. Call or see website for details. Do you want to lose 18 pounds fast and improve your health? Now you can lose up to 18 pounds in your first two months with Nutrisystem. Get delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners, even snacks and shakes delivered safely to your door. All delivered for free. It's easy to follow. And you'll see results in your first week. Just text BODY to 323232. You'll get your favorite foods made healthier and perfectly balanced to put your body in fat burning mode. Text BODY to 323232. 232 right now and get 50% off a month of meals and shakes. That's right, 50% off a month of meals and 50% off a month of shakes with probiotics to help support your immune system. Just text BODY to 323232 right now. There's even a money back guarantee. Millions of people have lost weight with Nutrisystem, and you can too. Lose up to 18 pounds in your first two months. Just text BODY to 323232. That's B O D Y to 323232. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at textplan.us. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out.